here three years ago with the talents. Yes. Did, were you already thinking about this project back then, or is it something that you... Uh, you know, actually, it was, yeah. We, um, this project's been on the, the table for quite a long time, actually, um, and kind of it took, took a, a back seat for a while with other projects kind of coming uh, to the fore, but, um, but yeah, that would have been, yeah, it's been this, it really has been a long time coming. So. And what, what was the inspiration? Why did you feel like the relevance for, for this particular film? Well, um, it's semi-autobiographical, mm -hmm. um, like, I mean, very fictionalized into an 11 minute story, mm -hmm. but um, the, the, the sort of discoveries and the emotions of it all are, you know, kind of real um, things, so uh, it was just a story I felt that I needed told. Um, mm -hmm. And it seems to be quite a timely one as well, mm -hmm. given that the, the world is waking up to mm -hmm. this sort of idea of non-binary gender and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. So, um, yeah. How, how do you like uh, personally approach like such projects? Where where does it begin, and uh, when do you like? This yeah. one it took quite a long evolution. Um, we developed it in, in, in initially through. Uh, Scottish Shorts, which is a um, so government-funded shorts program, mm -hmm. um, we developed it through them. Didn't get commissioned on the end of it, and then we're sort of just left with this sort of script with you know kind of no money behind it. But then once you kind of go, through, I don't know if it's the same here, but um, in the UK once you kind of go through this sort of process, there's not really that many other places. So we like to get money from. So we then decided to crowdfund it. Um, well, actually, I mean, the question we asked ourselves was rather than in an ideal world, what would we like to make this movie? We said, okay, in this world, what do we have to make this movie? Um, and that's when we just started gathering friends. I mean, essentially, this film was uh, the crew um, and many of the, the cast are actually just sort of friends who I've known through filmmaking. Um, and we all just kind of got together and made it, basically. Um, crowdfunded uh, just over £10,000 um, to cover the just production costs really um, yeah um, so it's, it's been a bit it's been a very uh, community collaborative so project it, and it's so. a proof that it works you know that you that you don't necessarily have to have that like state you know public yeah. funding um, absolutely and with this one projects, yeah. Yeah, absolutely and with this one um, in particular as well because uh, um, yeah you just kind of we feel very vindicated, I suppose, that we kind of, you know, having been, when, like, rejection is always hard to take, you know, so yes. then when you, uh, when you don't get funded, um, it's always kind of crushing, and then we took it away and we reworked some other bits and pieces, and, I mean, you'd see it from it, like, the number of kids that are in it, just from that alone makes it quite an ambitious project, so um, there were other things that were in it that were even more ambitious to begin with, so we kind of stripped a few things away, and, um, and then, yeah, just kind of got people people on board and as soon as the momentum started going mm -hmm. that was kind of it really mm -hmm. so. so we were earlier talking about you know sort of like I always imagined it to be kind of tough or challenging to work with kids and, and direct kids yes. um, and I, I'm also wondering how you were sort of like communicating this entire gender question because you know, I guess, I guess these were kids that were like in elementary school. Yeah, they were they were all sort of between uh, six and twelve, really. So yeah, um, so yeah. and the, the it's, lead is really the age, and where like this, I guess. I mean, you just said the world is opening up finally, but still, like this is really the age where like institutions <laughs> come in. And yes. really like, and you showed in the film too. So segregate like, like, you pose. into your yeah, yeah so it's a boys and, and girls I mean, I've been like so. repressing it so successfully, I guess. And like sometimes I go back to this time, but it's it's so uh, violent, you know, in a way. Like the way yeah. we are just <laughs> destroyed by it to a certain extent. Absolutely, and and it's that thing of if you just if you don't fit neatly into either a category, then you just get sort of left in the middle. Um, and it's really, it's quite humiliating. You know, I remember being that age and being really humiliated if sort of, whether it be sort of getting stopped by someone because I was going into the girls' toilets or um, the teacher asked the boys to stand up and I stood up with them or, do you know what I mean? So it was just quite a lot of, um, it's, a, it's a tough time when you're, when you feel like you're alone at that age. Um, but, uh, but back to what you're saying about uh, communicating it to the kids. Um, we, we, the stroke of luck that we had finding our lead character, um, whose his name is Lily. Um, the lead character is Ollie, but the actress is Lily. And um, she, she kind of fell in our lap a few weeks before we were set to start shooting. Um, and she was just, 
she was the character. Um, she she's a little girl, but she has short hair. She you know you would mistake her for a boy in the street, and um, and as much as I, I don't know what her own personal um, you know because she's she's ten, she's going to grow up. She can you know she's got the whole world to be whatever she wants to be. But um, she just fitted the character. Um, um, and I mean, everyone makes jokes about how how alike we are. Like mm. even like her ten year old me is a thirty two year old. That um, yeah, she yeah she was just a godsend. We didn't have to sort of cut any other kids hair to try and force them into this sort of tomboy model or anything. Mm. Like that she was and how, what we were looking for. What kind of like conversations do you remember with her, and how did they? Uh, we develop? never really discussed. I think like she, I, as far as I can sort of understand it she read the script and read it with her parents mm -hmm. and it just clicked so there mm -hmm. wasn't I didn't really have to have any kind of conversations mm -hmm. um, about that but um, there were some of the other kids who weren't quite so uh, understanding of it that we had to sort of explain that uh, yeah, it was actually a girl and these sorts of things so um, but it's also about kind of having a language to talk about it you know and developing that language which um, which we are very limited to with boy girl he she all these sorts of things so um, yeah, it was interesting. But then kids, like I said to before, but like kids are quite um, to direct. They don't because they they're not trained actors. Like you don't have to use that language, that sort of directing language with them. So you can you can ask them to um, you can sort of not order them around. But do you know what I mean? Like you do have to be much more of a puppet master in that regard. Um, and particularly at four o'clock in the afternoon when they just glaze over and there's nothing left in them, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, the, the challenges are just very different, I guess, um, to working with adults. So. And how, was it already played in Scotland or did, did you already like show it in oh, Scotland? Oh, uh, premiering. Uh, we have shown it, uh, we held sort of cast and crew screenings and they were quite big things because you had so many kids and so many uh, uh, parents and uh, grandparents and everything all wanting to see it. Um, but then we've also been working with um, uh, LGBT Youth Scotland, which is an organisation, um, and we sort of had them on quite early, um, just to sort of not I mean, kind of consultant, but just um, we were looking for kids within that sort of kind of range that they would be able to put us in touch with. And uh, they held a screening of um, Pride, um, and. Used, uh, played our uh, film as sort of the sort of, uh, B movie opener, so we had a, a short and then uh, the opening, and that was for um, a bunch of LGBT youth. Okay. Youths. And yeah. how did they? Did you? Did they react? Did, did they ask you questions? Did they? What was? What was their um, We to? haven't had anything but positive, um, uh, yeah, feedback from everybody. I mean, I, it's one of these films where it, it's such a positive film mm. that it's quite hard to to take anything negative from it, I think, like the sort of the energy, um, which I think has a lot to do with us, like the, sort of the, the tone and music and that sort of stuff, kind of, yes. uh, it puts a smile on everyone's face, which is, um, which is great, which is kind of what we were intending, so, you know, uh, a sort of, a, you know, social, social issues, but with positive spin is always good to me. How important, and I guess if you watch the film, it's, it is very important, like the aesthetics and like, um, I don't know, the, the the costumes and like what how much did you think about that in advance like what what role did all um, this play the music we know? um I mean things like sort of costumes stuff because there were so many people that was um there was a lot of kind of uh, actors wearing their own and stuff I think actually most of us actually wearing their own except for things like there was all the, like the kilts and things for the the Kaylee scene the big dance scene at the beginning and things like that so that was all had to be kind of gathered and everything um, in the usual way um. But it was a lot of it was, uh, you know, actors did their own makeup and hair and things like that because we just, it, we, you only have four hours with kids on set a day, so, um, so yeah, it was just kind of a lot of it was to sort of get it all together. Um, but uh, in regards to the music, um, that actually started off as originally in the script it was because we wanted this kind of cowboy thing going through, um, and it was originally written in as uh, harmonica. Um, and then when we started to, in post production, started kind of playing around with ideas. Um, Jeff Hannon, the composer, um, brought me the mariachi trumpet. Um, uh, he sort of composed a piece and, and sent it through. And it, as soon as I heard it, it was just like, that's, that's it. Right. Like that's that's the that's the energy, you know. That's that's the that's the energy that will carry the film 
all the way through. So um, yeah, it was a that was a nice development that mm. just sort of took place through. You know, when you just when you have it all and you're massaging it all together to try and make it into what it is. You know. So. Why did you take from it? And like, is it was it like an inspiration for for a longer projects or? We what, what did you do actually have a longer project um, developing. Uh, it's only a treatment stage at the moment um, with <coughs> SFTN, which is the Scottish Filmmakers Talent Network. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, the idea with that is uh, rather than taking the eight-year-old story and uh, extrapolating that, we're, we're meeting the character later in life. Um, so we're meeting her when she's 15, when she's 25, 30, and then at 42. So, um, it, and it, but all short, or is it like, yeah? No, it'll be a feature, feature okay. film. Um, okay. uh, but with it, just these sort of interweaving yeah. timelines. Um, and that... Kind, I mean, there was always we always had the idea that we might want to do it as a longer project, but then uh, the feedback that we got from people, everybody was just like, "I want to know more." You know, I want to see her. I want to know what happens to this kid. Mm. So um, that was kind of yeah, it was motivating. So how do you how do you imagine the, the future? Because I was thinking that it's. Um in a way, she is very lucky because she seems to grow up in a very um, like caring social yes. environment with like yeah. conscious parents and you know like I would say like a rather like middle class background where like yeah, there absolutely. is a certain conscious or sense you know yeah for sure. it. and so could that mean like would that mean that she might have like a brilliant beautiful uh, future or like what did you think about said, that like, um, she, I mean she definitely uh, it does come from a, a, a lucky place mm -hmm. um, and that was actually something that was uh, we did discuss that um, and we're quite keen on that uh, particularly with with Scottish film um, it can there's quite a lot of um, it can tend to be on the doer side sometimes that we have um, we just wanted it to be happy and the the her antagonists are not specific people or do you know what I mean it wasn't that there was an abusive father or these kinds of you know these sorts of kind of tropes that um, kind of came to, seemed to be repeated um, we wanted loving parents that were in as much as sort of a dilemma themselves you know it's like what do you do when you have a kid who doesn't conform to gender uh, types like it's 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 kind of tricky for everybody involved so um, yeah and we were also we were just very keen that it was it was the antagonist was these sort of outside forces as well as something inside so um, yeah what, what is um, what do you think about this scene when when she sort of like sneaks out and is like uh, watching you know this oh, through the window other family through the window like what is that like yeah. a look into some sort of like desired future or um, uh, like just or just a possibility you know possibility that yeah this um, the idea that um, I mean that was very much it that was like I mean it's that, that scene. Uh, where she sees the the family with the two moms, or sort of puts it together, really, and realizes that that is something that she that there's not just sort of two options. You you can't. It's not just being a, a mum or a dad. Do you know what I mean? Or mum and dad, I suppose. So, um, which is something that she hadn't really considered before, um, given that most of what society gives us is you know, I'd be very male, or you're gonna be very female, and. Uh, and then, um, yeah, she sort of, she makes, she, she, she understands something um, and then goes on the journey to the uh, I mean, that was something that was important as well, is that she was the one who rescued herself, if you see what I mean. So she, she puts the bits together. I think it's very beautiful because I feel so much of queer film in the past has had to, like, deal with all those, like, missing, like, infrastructures and, you know, the... The isolation of you know protagonists or yeah. you know, the people like the characters driving the plot, and here you have like a very young person who is struggling or like who confronts you know like just difficulties growing up into a heteronormative society, which it still is. But there seem to be ways you know like the soccer, like the you know like mm -hmm. older girls who like have this soccer club where you know she's accepted. And yeah. So it's nice, it's beautiful because you see that like there are like infrastructures being built, you know, and there are possibilities and. It's not as, you know, like depressing. Yeah. Like we, I feel like we've internalized this so much too, and it's, yeah, I yeah. think you did a really great job with that. Oh, thank you. And it's not like too, it's like not <laughs> too romantic or like, you know. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's we, we kind of borrow this sort of eight year old perspective 
or I don't know whether we borrow the eight-year-old perspective or I put my perspective into an eight-year-old. I'm not so sure, but um, but we wanted it to be very much like felt from sort of the injustice that she experiences um, to then sort of overcoming it herself. Um, and a bit like with the um, the football at the end, the soccer at the end, it was like. Um, all she has to do is go and ask to join in. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of her getting over her internal. Anyway, so it starts. Spoiler alert! But it starts at the beginning with her not being allowed to play with the boys anymore because she's sort of reached that age and um, the sort of segregating of the sexes. Um, but she doesn't want to go and play with the girls. Like that's sort of it's not. Um, that's not how she necessarily sees herself or just doesn't really understand why she's being excluded from one group and forced to join another by default. Um, but then, so then it's her uh, internal growth um, and realizations that then allow her to um, to sort of yeah accept um, just to sort of that there's it's kind of almost like up to her to choose how she it's not just these laws and rules that adults impose you know it's like she's she's now joining in and now she gets to shape it how she wants to so. very beautiful I hope you will have great discussions and just you know confrontations with people here at the festival yeah. and I'm pretty sure they'll enjoy it a lot especially the young crowd yeah thank you so much Pleasure.